So everyone, it is finally here, iPadOS 26, and included in that is a new windowing and multitasking management modes, which is something that I've been yearning for ever since the 2018 iPad Pro and iPadOS 13. In this video, we're going to be going over every single nook and cranny of this new windowing and multitasking mode from this new quad look to how to manage everything, extended monitor support, including compatibility because it's no longer just reserved for the iPad Pro and Empowered iPads, which is something that I love to see to get more accessibility to more people. So without further ado, let's see if this new multitasking mode finally makes this iPad a replacement to your laptop. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into it. And just for reference sake, I'm using my M4 iPad Pro right here to show off all these new multitasking features. And I do want to start off by talking about compatibility because surprisingly, all this windowing stuff, as long as you can run iPadOS 26, you will be capable of doing it, which was not something that could have been said with the old stage manager. So, so of course you have your iPad Pro M4, your 12.9 inch third generation and later, and then your iPad Pro 11 inch first generation and later. So again, a 2018 iPad Pro will be able to do this. And then you have your iPad Airs. So you are able to do it with, of course, your M series iPad Airs, but also with your third gen iPad Air and later, and then also entry level iPad. So the, of course the A16, which is the latest one, but then the A generation and later. So this is bringing whole new life to a bunch of different devices that previously weren't capable of doing anything in the pro level moniker. And then you have your iPad mini A17 Pro, and then your fifth gen or later for the iPad mini, meaning that that little iPad mini can probably be plugged into an external display, which we'll touch on later, and be able to run all this new windowing system. So that is what we're talking about from compatibility. Now let's move on to the settings really quickly and talk about what you've either gained or lost. But if we go into our settings and then go down to where it says multitasking and gestures, this is going to be your main control center for the multitasking gestures. You now have three modes on iPad OS. You have your full screen apps, which is gonna be what we've traditionally used in the past. As you can see, full screen app is happening right now. And you can always access a full screen app even in the window to app mode, which is one that I currently have on. And that is going to be the new one. And it says here, resize and arrange multiple windows in a single space and multitask with ease. And then you have the stage manager view, which is what we had previously, which I wasn't a big fan of stage manager to begin with. And I only really use it with extended monitor support, but again, it's still there. One thing to take note is that split view I'll talk about because it is technically still here and it's actually way better than it was before, but slide over view is officially gone. So there is no more the ability to have an iPhone size application on the left or right and then be able to slide it in and out for you know data manipulation or whatever the case may be. That is completely gone. You do have some other options here like close all windows after swiping home, automatically show and hide the dock. I leave those turned off. I like to have that on my own. And then you have these settings down here, which is something that I've already done before and something that's been around before, which is your productivity gestures, your four finger gestures, your shake to undo, swipe from corner, which again, I have turned off. And that's basically just for the screenshots as well as having a quick note. And then you have your start PMP or picture in picture automatically. One other ability that was lost with multitasking is the ability to switch in between applications by swiping on the home bar down here. So that is gone when you do have the windowed mode on. Something that we did have to lose because Apple said that from a UI perspective and a user experience perspective, it just didn't make any sense anymore, which I'm okay with because I didn't use it often, but I do know that our other resident iPad user, Ryan from 9to5Mac, does miss that as well as miss the slide over. But now that we have the settings and compatibility out of the way, let's get into all the new multitasking and what it means for the iPad. So first off, let's open up any application. Let's open up Safari. So you can see Safari by default will open up in this large view but you still have your little nub down here. Now the nub has changed a little bit. It's a lot thinner than it was before. So it works the same way, but I can grab this and make it smaller. And then I have the new window mode. And as you can see, it is very customizable and very fluid. You can go as small as you want, as thin as you want. You can go into that iPhone looking view, which kind of reminds you of slide over. You can make it bigger or smaller. I mean, you can have this tiny little window and then you can just grab it with your finger and move it around like so. And of course, it's also gonna work with the magic keyboard. We'll touch on that when we do extended monitor support. But again, let's enlarge this a little bit. And then in terms of your new actions or the new three dots that you have up here for managing it, if we make this a little bit bigger just to be able to see, you do have your sidebar here with Safari, but then you have your new kind of Mac-like interactions that you have. So you can close the application, you can minimize it, and you can truly minimize it. So if I press minimize, it goes down to the dock. If I open this up again, it'll open it back where I was before. And then you have your enlarge button, which you can go full screen with. Very easy, very self-explanatory. 
So now, what happens when you open up another app? The way that you bring up the dock is similar to as before, but if I want to grab Twitter, I just tap on it instead of dragging it in, and then it opens up that window for me. And of course, you can make it bigger, and just because the nub is on the bottom right hand corner does not mean that that's where you need to go in order to enlarge it or resize it. So if I do want to grab it here, I can make it larger and smaller and move it around with no issues whatsoever. And again, you can see how responsive this is being. No issues whatsoever. And if you want to open up another one, let's say I want to open up my Files app. It'll just open in that manner. So it's going to open over the Safari window because, again, we are in full-on multitasking. And then to go back to it, you just tap into Safari. If I want to make it smaller again, make it smaller. Move this around to the left if I want to. Tap in here. Move this up. So that also works. You can enlarge it again, make it wider. And there still are some limitations with some of the applications, depending on which ones you're using. So for instance, this one, again, it can't elongate anymore. You'd have to actually open it up completely in order to do that. So depending on the app, it might have some restrictions in terms of sizing and malleability. But overall, they are relatively good at being able to restructure themselves from small app to large app to full screen app. But now let's open up a fourth one. So if I want to open up, let's say, the notes application. Here we have the notes application and went into full screen mode because that's what I was doing before. And now I'm bringing it lower. And now we have four applications open. And of course, this looks a little bit cluttered. So what we can do here is go to the top left corner and hold down on here. And then you have your new windowing mode or your tile modes. So if we press the four corners, it'll move all four of these into each of the four equal sections, making them equal size. And you can still manipulate them as you see fit. So I can swipe on here, swipe on here move stuff around if I want to. I also have the ability to continue on my notes, even with my pencil. So if I go in here, I can do that as well, which is great to see. And then what I meant earlier with split view, split view actually still exists. If you can see, I have a little bar right here. I can actually move this over, move it that way. And you can see that the bar does allow you to move the applications at least horizontally, which is great to see. I do wish that they had a bar down here so I can maybe move it up and down. Maybe they'll add that in a future update. But for right now, split view is only down the middle to be able to manipulate them horizontally. So vertically you can't resize them, but horizontally you can. But what's great about this is that if I tap in here, hold down again, and then go into maybe split view, then you go back to that old split view, albeit with a new UI design. But again, you can make it as small as you want, make it as large as you want. And split view is definitely still here. It's just honestly better in my opinion. So split view still works. It's just underneath the new window management system. And you know it's on when you see that little bar in the middle showcasing that you are in split view. So Split view is still available. Do keep that in mind and don't think otherwise. But now let's keep opening applications. For instance, let's open up the home app. Let's open up, let's open up Chrome. Let's open up another Safari window. So long press on here. Let's open up a new window. So it does show up. There's a new window for Safari. And now there's two gestures that you do need to learn here. The first one is a quick swipe up, which actually goes back to your home page, but you can see that you're still in window mode. So on the left and right, it splits up all the applications. And let's say I want to open up LumaFusion. Open up LumaFusion, and now that's part of the windowing system, which is great to see. And then the other gesture you're going to want to learn is that multitasking gesture. So if you swipe up and hold, you go into expose mode. So it basically just lays out all the different applications that are opening in that view. And you can see that I have eight windows open. We have tested this out, and you're allowed to have up to 12 different applications open at the same time. And then it's first one in, first one out. So for instance, if I open up a 13th window, the first window that's going to go out is going to be the first window that I opened up. So probably Safari would be kicked out. But then you can, let's say if I want to tap in on here, it'll just bring that one to the foreground and still go back into that multitasking view. So this does feel a lot more Mac-like, but what I love about this is that they're not losing the touch-first essence or DNA of iPad and iPad OS. So again, you can see that those three dots are pretty small, but even though I'm using just my finger to control it, if I tap on it, it's going to make it bigger. And then I can hold down to get whatever view I need to. And you can see that it moved it out of the way to bring it more center for me. So if I want to, let's say, do a triple view, it'll grab three of them. And then the beautiful part about this is that split view works in this mode as well. So if I want to have three of them that are different sizes, maybe I have two applications that I need to grab data from, but I'm really working only on the center one. You can then do that. And then you can even manipulate it after the fact. Of course, split view is still on here. So if I move this over, look at that. You can still move it there, which is good to see. It's only on one side, which is fine. But then if I tap on here and then opens it up again, and then I can add another fourth window down here if I want to. So there's multiple ways to kind of manipulate the sizes of these, and they're working very well, especially for a beta one. Again, this is a beta, so I have dealt with a couple of glitches. Nothing detrimental to the data or the use cases that I'm doing, but every now and then I have to quit out of an application. I've had to do a soft reset on the iPad once in 48 hours of testing this out. But multitasking works absolutely beautifully. 
And then with the new pointer and the Magic Keyboard with extended monitor support, it works even more precisely. But lastly, before we do jump into the extended monitor, this does have to do with multitasking, so I did want to bring this up. But for instance, if I swipe up and let's say I want to open up YouTube, right? If I open up YouTube, start playing a video, the audio situation is not what we additionally wanted or initially wanted. So if I bring this volume down so we don't get copyrighted, we have this, so this is playing in the background. And then if I swipe up and let's say I pull up the music application, open up the music app, and then I start playing the music app or playing a song from the music app, it will pause the YouTube video. So you cannot have two audio sources going at the same time, unfortunately, but you do have much better management of what's going on from a microphone and speaker perspective from the iPad when you do have external things plugged in. But you can still not have two audio sources. So I did mention that in an earlier video and that was debunked here in this one. So now that we know how to navigate everything on the iPad Pro, let's move on to an extended monitor and see what that looks like. So everyone, here we have it. I have connected my Satsu external display up here via USB-C and it's all being powered by the iPad. As you can see, I do have my little moniker right there that shows it off. And if we go into our settings, we're gonna start the same way we did before. And this time we go into display and brightness. So here we have some new options that we did before, albeit they're pretty much the same options, just they look a little bit different, but you do see that you have the ability to screen mirror, which obviously that seems redundant unless you're doing a presentation. And then you have your extended display. Next up, you wanna check on the settings for each individual display if that's what you wanna do. So you have your built-in retina, which is the iPad right here. And then you also have your Satsu Elite 16, which is an SDR display and you can allow display mode changes. And then lastly, you're gonna to wanna to mess with the range. As you can see, my iPad is down here. So if I go up, my cursor does go up to the Satsu and that's something that was already predetermined. So hopefully by default, it does that, but we'll see if you probably have to arrange it every single time. So now let's see how it all works. For the most part, everything kind of acts as its own little siloed screen. So everything that happens up here does happen up here. So if I open up Safari, if I open up a Chrome window, if I open up the home, if I open up, let's say my files app, and then I hover over here, I can still hold this down. I can get the quad box going and I just get more screen real estate. I still get my split view that's happening down here. So if I hold here, and move it around, I can make this bigger or smaller, and then the same thing goes up here. So everything works pretty much identically. It's just, it's not a touch first interface. So you are relying on the brand new cursor, which you can see right here, I'm gonna zoom in. And what I like about the new cursor is that it still has the essence of the iPad circular cursor, but you have a much more precise point, which does make a difference. I will say with the old cursor, it just felt like it lacked confidence whenever I was trying to do something or pinpoint something because it was trying to mimic the pointer finger. But now you do have the ability to kind of really hone in on each individual kind of letter and things like that. So I can go in here and highlight something if I want to. So overall, it does work great from a multitasking perspective. And then if I go up here and click on the control center, one thing to note is that if you do open up the control center on the external display, it's actually going to open up control center down here. And then also from an audio standpoint, I can click on here. You can see that it did default to the speakers on this display, which it doesn't have any speakers. So of course nothing's gonna show up. But if I go back into control center, tap on here, and then click on here, you have better audio management. So I can just switch back to the audio speakers and then I'm good to go with music playing in the background. So again, this is what it looks like from a multi taxing perspective. It works identically to how it works on the iPad Pro, but you are still limited to one external display for the iPad Pro. And you do need an M series iPad for external extended monitor support. For the other iPads, you can still mirror the display. So like the iPad mini seven, for instance, you can mirror the display onto an external display and still get this cool windowing mode, which does change the game up a little bit for those cheaper iPads. But if you want true extended monitor support, it needs to be an M powered machine. But that is everything you need to know about multitasking. My recommendation is to jump in there whenever you do get the chance, if you do want to risk it with the beta. So far in this video alone, with this multitasking situation, I've had two springboard resets, which I'll overlay on the screen right now. Again, not a big deal, it goes back to normal, but just know that that is what you're gonna be dealing with if you do update to a beta. From a data standpoint, I haven't lost any data and I haven't lost anything serious, but just know there are some things that are kind of annoying when you are dealing with a beta update, but that just comes with the territory because it is a developer beta one, which is gonna be the most glitchy out of them all. But let's finish up this video, everybody, and leave some comments down below of what you think. So that will just about do for this video, everybody. Albeit, this is still a beta one, so there's a lot of glitches that are happening, a couple soft resets that you might have to do. But again, that is the point of a developer beta. It's to give feedback to Apple on how it's working. 
but the bones are there. This works extremely well, for the most part it is very stable, and the iPad Pro to me feels like a completely different device now with this new windowing and multitasking mode. It does make it feel more Mac OS like, more productivity focused, and more pro level. But the beautiful thing is that it's not just reserved for the Pro, it, you can use it on the Air, you can use it on the iPad Mini, and including the entry level iPad, which is unbelievable. For 300 bucks, you now have a workhorse on there. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. Get subscribed because we have a full walkthrough that I'm working on, which is going to be a movie essentially of every single feature and change that's happened with iPad OS 26 and I'm just so excited that Apple finally opened up the floodgates and gave us what we truly wanted on iPad OS which was a Mac OS like experience without losing the essence of that touch first interface on iPad OS and iPads and I think they've done it beautifully here with a couple of things that do need to be tweaked which I'm sure it will be over time but that'll do it everybody if you made it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end and if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out our WWDC coverage and some other videos that we have down the pipeline. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.